inside. You thought I was to die for. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free. It is now, Father, that the hour has come that we would glorify your name and honor you in a way that your word would go forth among the people of God. And it's our prayer, God, that it will go forth with clarity, compassion, love, and most of all, obedience. And God, we thank you in advance for what your word will do and has the power to accomplish. Speak, Lord, for even as Samuel said, thy servant hear of thee and will obey. Help us now to run not be weary, to be walking and not faint. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We certainly thank God for what has preceded us in, in prayer and um, intercession and and um, devotional uh, service and, and just everything that is Sunday school service and everything that has preceded us today you all are a blessing and a tremendous blessing while you were around the altar the, the, the biggest request I seen um, and just uh, it was for direction direction um I, I, I want to share something with you. Um, before I was a preacher, I used to be in the uh, car business, and and I would sell a lot of new car trade-ins, and I had a relationship at the Ford store in Athens during that time, and I bought a lot of their trade-ins when they came in. I bought them in buck, and and um, so they I, I found favor with the dealership. And in finding favor with the dealership, I could also sell a, a brand new car, not being one of their salesmen, just being a business associate of theirs. So this particular time I had, uh, and I sold a few of them, I had this preacher that wanted a particular car. And, um, and uh, I worked the deal out with him. And uh, now I didn't understand the power of agreement at that time the way I do now. So. His wife was not with him. We went to the dealership, and, and I showed him the vehicle, and he decided that was the one he wanted. And just before he signed that contract, he came over to me, and I was kind of letting him kind of look it over. He came over to me and grabbed my hand, and he laid hands on that car, and he looked up to the Lord, and he prayed in the power of agreement. And that's the first time I'd ever seen anybody do that. And the scripture I'm going to read today is, is one that is is is... is is really designed for couples. And I saw today several of you um, praying for direction. And, 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 and in doing that, that's why I want to share today. That's why this text, now it does talk about the church, um, but it also deals with you um, uh, because, let me tell you something, the Bible says a threefold chord. And you'll find this in, in, in uh, Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, about the 12th verse. It says a three-fourth chord is not easily broken. Okay? Well, what can make that three-fourth chord? You, especially a spouse, amen. Thank you. Brandon's on the spot. All right. It says, and if one prevails against him, two shall withstand him, and a three-fourth chord is not quickly or easily is the translation of that broken. Now what that means is when when two come in agreement, that's the key. It can be a husband or wife. It can be two sisters. That's a powerful agreement. Amen, somebody. It can it can it can be two friends. It can be two people. It can be a deacon and a preacher. A deacon and a pastor. Amen powerful and the third person can be the Holy Ghost 
See, what we don't realize is the person of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is a person. And the Bible says, amen, somebody. And the Bible says in, 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 in the eighth chapter of, of Romans, about the 26th verse, that the Spirit comes in agreement with your prayer. And even prays the prayer that you don't have, that you don't even make utterance of. He comes in and intercedes for you, the Spirit of God. So what we have to realize is that if we can get to, amen, somebody. Sometimes it can be a husband and a wife. It can be a, it can be a husband and a wife to be. But if the two of you can agree, that, and, and, and it can be in God's will. When it's in God's will, then the Holy Ghost comes in. Amen, somebody. And then that's the third person of the, see, the Holy Spirit is a person. And when you agree and when you come in harmony with God's will, then the Holy Ghost comes in. And he becomes that third will in your life. And then when he agrees, he can see around corners. He can see through muddy water and spot dry land. So that thing that you don't know how to pray for, that may be a hindrance in your life, then the Holy Spirit makes utterance of that thing. And, oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's where we're at today. It can be a mother and a daughter just before she goes to school. It can be a father and a son just before he goes off to service. It can be a pastor and a businessman. Oh, my God. Now I'm going to read this scripture. And I wanted to, I wanted, this is not even the text, but this is where we're going right now. Um, uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 18, and, and, and let's, 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 let's turn now. Matthew 18. And uh, I actually want to start at verse 18, Matthew 18 and 18. Let's go to 18 and 18. Very good. All right. This is not, we, we'll get to the text in a minute, but I want to I wanna whet your appetite with this appetizer. Amen. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven now the next verse says again which it reiterates the 18th okay when you see that word when it starts with again what it is doing it is reiterating what he said in verse 18 okay so he's saying it again but he's saying it in a different way alright so this way what he's saying he says again I say unto you Somebody say me. me. Again, I say unto you. I want you to say it like you believe it. Me. me. See, the word is talking to you. You got you to gotta make it personal. When I come to church, God is speaking to me. I know he's speaking to you. I know he's speaking to you. I know. But when I come to church and I come in what? God is speaking to me. I expect God to talk to me. I, this is where I get to converse. This is where I commune with him. God is speaking to me. Amen. So, and he says again, I say unto you, somebody say me, me, that if two of you shall agree on earth, where are you at? As touching, not even touching. That means that I can call Boston on the telephone and they can be having a problem and we can agree. Yeah. Hallelujah. Most, most people misquote that says touching. It don't say touching, it says as touching. Amen, somebody. Anything. Not spiritual stuff. That man was praying that that car was what he was supposed to get, that it wasn't going to break down, that it was going to take him where he needed to take him, that he was going to be able to afford it, he was going to be able to pay for it, they wasn't coming back and get it. Y'all hear me, don't you? Everything and anything you pray. Amen. So young man, if they grab your hand one day, you'll know what they're doing. You just agree with them. I'm talking to the car salesman now. You just agree with them. Hallelujah. Anything that they shall ask, it shall be done. Okay? 
Pastor T. There have been occasions I've asked some stuff that were, now I said, come in agreement with the Holy Spirit and God's will. What did the prayer say? Listen, we, uh, listen. The disciples went to Jesus and said, teach us how to pray. He said, pray like this. That thy will be done. Amen. You got to pray according to his will, not your will. Jesus even proved that. Why is that? When Jesus, Jesus said, can this cup pass? He showed us the example. Watch this, y'all. Oh, uh, Listen, the Holy Spirit is moving so fast, I can't hardly keep up with it. Watch this. When Jesus went to Gethsemane, he tried to get somebody to agree with him. They went to sleep. Jesus was exampling to us what the scripture means and what I'm trying to get you to agree with. He says, listen. He says, I, Peter, James, and John. He says, I want y'all to watch right here. And, and he took them a little further. Is there anybody in here that the spirit can take a little further right now? He took them a little further than the rest of the disciples. Listen, not because they were all that, but because they showed him a little bit more love. Because Jesus could not love either one of them anymore. He could not show favoritism. But let me tell you something. You can show him a little bit more love. Oh, I, I, I'm already preaching. I'm already preaching. Watch this. And then when you show him a little bit more love, he'll take you a little bit. You see, the other disciples had to stay down now. <laughs> Y'all better hear me. But, when, but the ones who showed Jesus a little love, he took them a little further. So those of you who want to go a little further, show Jesus a little bit more love. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So he took Peter, James, and John a little further. And he says, I want y'all to agree with me because he knew the power of agreement. I talked this one time in Bible study. I'm going to share it with you right now. They did a study, and this was a physical study. Everything in the physical comes out, everything in the natural comes out of the spiritual. They did a study, study uh, Dr. Hubbard, of a, of, a, of, a, of a normal horse. And a normal horse, Sherry, y'all sit down, y'all sit down. Y'all been so kind. And a normal horse could pull 7,000 pounds. And stay with me. And then they started getting them big Belgium, you know, those big ones, huge. And they could pull about 9,000 pounds alone, one horse. So then, in your mind, you would naturally think if one can pull 9,000, then naturally in my mind, Pastor, I would say two would pull. There you go. That's natural thought. But what happens is, when two of them get together, then energy becomes synergy. Oh my God. Now, now that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big word. Well, let me break it down for you. If I had, in a, if I had my English teachers, and I don't see Miss Jack, I don't see, God, I, don't see number, I don't see my teachers. But anyway, they, they, they would say that the word synonym that connects two things together and make it more powerful. If I, if, I, if I go over here to my mechanic, Joe, and, and, and I go over here to my mechanic that work on stuff, Rico and Anthony, it would be a synchronizer in a transmission that takes two small gears, sync them together, and make them more powerful. If I, if I go with uh, Ghost Jr. up top and, and that, and that, and that uh, scientific mind, it's called synergy. What synergy is, is when you connect two things and they turn simultaneously together and they produce more. What they found out is that Belgium horse that would pull 9,000 pounds connected with another Belgium horse that would pull 9,000 pounds together could pull 32,000 pounds because the energy connecting them together in sync with each other made a powerful difference. I said all that to say as my grandmama was safe, she was still here. When you connect with someone that's thinking the same way you're thinking, that's praying the same way you're praying, 
that's believing the same way you believe it. And then the Holy Ghost gets in the midst of it. He says there's nothing you can ask that he will not do. Oh my God. That's just the appetizer. Gets to the text. We're moving on. Mark. Mark's gospel. Second chapter of Mark. St. Mark. All the old school that was taught. Pastor Williams would say John Mark. Where we were taught. They took me back old school yesterday. I watched Pastor Reed get up here and read the scripture at the funeral. And uh, that's that old school, y'all. He said it was the division of Psalms. We wasn't taught the song. Y'all heard it when he said that? That's old school. Oh my God. One of the, one of the, I was a young buck coming up trying to learn the Bible. I messed around and said, Chapter, uh, young man. They were, they were, they were, they was. I mean, he was. He wasn't meaning me no harm. They, just, they were just directing, him. young man. I want to talk to some in chapters. It's divisions, yes, sir. You know, ain't had no way in my job. He was, he was teaching. Amen. Let's look at verse. I'm gonna start at verse number one. And again, he entered into Capernaum. And this was probably Peter's house, because that's what Peter's house was. After some days, and it was noised or reported that he was in the house. And straightway, many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. In other words, it was like the old church at the spring. There wasn't no more room in there. So much so, until the door was crowded, he couldn't even get in the door. And it says, uh, no, not so much as about the door. And what was going on? You ain't got to fix nothing up. You ain't got to come up with no hocus pocus. You ain't got to come up with no all that. He said all he did was preach the. You ain't got to do nothing other than that. It'll fill the house up. That's it. That's all he was doing, Sister Kathy. That's all he was doing. He said, I was preaching the word. Good God Almighty. We come up with all these techniques. The man, preach the word. That's all he was doing. The text said he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was bored by four. He had four people. In agreement. That's that's the key. Okay? We talked about the I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna get into all that because we're not gonna be that long. But he had four people in agreement for him. Okay? He was bored, he was he was paralyzed, he was on a cart, and there were four men on each end of that cart holding that cart. He had four in agreement with him. See, amen. Let me let me go on, I'll come back. And when they could not come nigh unto him, being Jesus, couldn't get to him for the press or the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let, him, they let down the bed uh, wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Watch this, y'all. When Jesus saw their faith, Can I share something with you? It wasn't just the man on the bed. Because that would have been his faith. Y'all with me? It says when Jesus saw, when he saw them in agreement, when he saw them together, when he saw them all in one accord, Watch what he said. Now y'all don't hurt. Now Digga Hubbard always, Digga Hubbard always uh, uh, quote me on this when I said it. Y'all don't hurt me. Say if you've been around me. 
when I see something that show no, I'll say, son. Huh? Y'all heard me say that before. When I, I'll say, son. That's, that's when I'm amazed, man. This is the only time that Jesus said that. When Jesus saw them go to that extra work, for this one man saw that faith, he said, son. Y'all see it? It amazed Jesus, y'all. When we come together for one accord on one purpose, it amazes Jesus. And he says, son, what do you need me to do? Y'all sit down. Y'all can sit down. Y'all can sit down. The title of this message is simple. The power of agreement. The power of agreement. Um... The other night after study, Deacon God was mentioning something to me, and he was walking out, and he, he was he mentioned something to me. And I told him immediately, I said, Well, I'm coming in agreement with you right now. Can I share something with you? Don't take this the wrong way. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. It, it, it happens to all of us. Matter of fact, matter of fact, before I go there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share the word because see, the, the Bible says that His word won't come back void. See, see, I want you to know it is God's word because God's word won't come back void. See, Adrian, Pastor T word may, but God's word won't won't. That's why when I stand in the, behind this book board, I repeat what God's word says. See what I'm saying? Turn to 1 John. I want to show y'all this before I say what I'm going to say. Turn to 1 John, third chapter, in the eighth verse. I want to show you something. Everybody there or looking at the screen? Either one. I want to share something with you. It says, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. We don't get no amens right now. I'm going I'm to I'm say it again. He that committed sin is from the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. We don't stop there. We go on. Here's the B clause. For this purpose. What purpose? The purpose of the devil tempting you and, 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 uh, and enticing you to commit sin. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest or was brought that he may, might destroy the works plural of the devil now watch this if you listen say amen it has happened to all of us so don't feel like if you're going through it right now the long ranger because I got to tell you this somebody because listen until you understand how to fully come in com, com, um, compliance and agreement with God's word and will you can't effectively speak the word that you need to speak See, when I want y'all intercessors, I want y'all to, this is one of the clauses right here. Amen. Let me tell you something funny. So, when I had to speak to the intercessors on, on Friday night, I talked to my wife. She's in charge. I say so. So whenever and and, and in, in ministry the same way. So Kathy will tell you when I gave her the music ministry. I say if you call me in, I'll, I'll I'll deal with it. Otherwise, the music ministry. I mean, when Desiree came here, Desiree was telling me. I said you need to go talk to Kathy. But 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 but, but nothing. So Kathy in charge of music. So Desiree said, okay, I'll go talk to Sister Kathy. He was trying to talk to me. I was like, uh, you need to go talk to Kathy. Whoever's in charge, when I delegate authority, I don't get delegated and take it back and put it in my pocket. When they got authority, they got they they are in charge. Amen. So, so let me tell you something funny. 
So Sister Tony told me, she said, I want you to come talk to intercessor Friday night. I said, okay. I said, well, how much time I got? She said, I don't know, 15 minutes. I said, do what? You can't get no preaching on my there in 15 minutes. She said, okay, well, what you need? I said, well, at least an hour. So I'm, I'm, I'm telling you all this. This is the B clause of what they were going to get. She, when I got my hour, look, she was in charge. When I got through my hour, So now you get the rest of the, this is the B clause of what you get right here. Y'all getting the rest of the story right now. Amen? All right. The, 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 the rest of the story. All right. Um, when we fully understand how to come in agreement, you got to know the word. See, see, just like Pastor T word just like your word, you got to speak God's word. So when you come in agreement with somebody, you say, you repeat his word back to him. Not because he don't know it, it's because it needs to come out of your mouth. Because everything that was created was, came out of the mouth and, and had power. So when, that, when he spoke everything in existence, he spoke it out of his mouth. So when you, listen, it has authority. The Bible says in Ephesians, it becomes the sword of the Lord. It becomes the sword when the spirit hits it and it comes out of your mouth. It has effect on something. See what I'm saying? Watch this. This is one of the key scriptures. I want all y'all intercessors to keep this in your, in your Bible. Keep it in your mind. Learn this. You learn this. Whenever you see something come before you, you say, God, your word says that you sent Jesus to destroy the works of the devil. And let me tell you one of the main works of the devil right now, sickness and disease. So when you start praying for somebody, their sickness and disease is from the devil. And you say, Lord, you sent your word to destroy the works of the devil. I come in agreement right now that you're going to be healed. I come in agreement right now. Yeah. Yeah. So I come in agreement with right now because he sent his word to destroy the work of the devil. See, Jesus was the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. We don't have him right now, but we have his. Speak it out your mouth. Stand on it. Decree and declare and watch the power of God. Hallelujah in the house. Y'all got it? That's the rest of it for y'all intercessors. That's how you do it. You declare and decree the word of God over the life of that person that comes. And you said, Lord, you said you were going to destroy this word. I come in agreement with it. And let me tell you right now, most of the time, Sickness and disease? Yes. Amen. 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 Let me move on. Hallelujah anyhow. Thank you, God. If you listen, say amen. The crowd was so big that he couldn't get in. And sometimes that's a test of faith. I shared with the intercessors the first time the door may not be open. That don't, listen, just because you see a roadblock, that don't mean you ain't going to get to the other side. That doesn't mean you may have to go another way. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Look, when, when, first, when I see a roadblock, that don't mean I ain't getting where I'm going. I mean, what, what detour am I going to take? Amen, somebody. Watch this. So when they saw the roadblock that the door was, was closed, that didn't mean that, okay, we got to take this sick man back. No! Show me the detour. Where's the detour at? 
So one of them, at that time, when the, when, the, when, the, when the crowd was so thick that they couldn't get in the door where Jesus was, one of them at that time said, okay, where's the detour? See, now, when you intercessors, those of you who pray, when it, when it, when it, when it seemed like one-way block, okay, God, show me the detour. Show me the detour. Show me the detour. At that time, the houses were built of stone, and they had flat roof. And on the top of the roof uh, was also uh, what they call a, a, an escape just in case anything happened. So they, they, it was always a ladder on the side of the house that you could get up to the roof. So when they couldn't get in for the press in the front of the, front of the, and, and, and the door, so what happened is that one of them, one of them said, I don't know which one it was, one of them said, okay, Lord, where's the detour? <laughs> we getting in here. I know you sent us. I know we prayed. And this is what you told us to do. I am in agreement with my other three right here. And I know this where we going. God, where's the detour? Somebody say Amen. The Bible says that they got up on the roof and they had one sick of the palsy. Now, stay with me. Look at verse number four, verse number three. And they came to him, bringing one sick of the palsy. You cannot bring them physically to Jesus now. See? But you can bring them before the throne of his word. Y'all missed that. I'm, 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 I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm not going to leave this until y'all get it. This is, this is if, if, if we don't have an emotional cry, it'll be okay today. Because it's, it's, it's important for the intercessors to know this. I, 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 I mean, I, I can call y'all out that was sitting there asking for direction. I'm telling you now. I, 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 I I'm, <laughs> look, I can, I, I mercy God. One of the gifts, and if a pastor don't have discernment, he ain't got nothing. And if he can't hear in the spirit, he can't do nothing. Matter of fact, if I have time, I'll show you where, um, where Jesus, a lot of times, didn't do what he did from divine appointment. He did it from the gifts that he had in him. See, a lot of times, Sister Kathy, we'll think that Jesus operated in divine intervention. No. Several of the time, Jesus said in his spirit he groaned. Good God about it knows. That means he, he, what he did, he did it because he had the gift of another spirit on the inside of him, the same gift as we have, and he was able to discern. He was able to know. He was able to, to, to know something by the spirit of knowledge, not by divine appointment. Now, that, that's more of the intercessor. I'm trying to, that ain't a layman. I'm kind of, if it went like that, it's okay. It's all right. It's all right. We can't physically bring them to Jesus now. But the Bible says that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We can bring them under subjection of the... Thank you. That's how you bring them to Jesus. I'm going to say that one more time. That's why you quote the scripture over their life and not your word. Those four were able, Deacon Bailey, to bring that person physically to Jesus so that Jesus could speak the word over him. He's given us that authority now. Amen. So we bring them on the subjection of the the word. And we just speak the word over their life. I'm glad to see the intercessors right. I see Tammy right the whole time. That's what I want. I see Sister Kathy. I see Sister Tony. That's what I want. Because the Holy Spirit is going to bring it back to you. And you're going to see God move with power. <laughs> this particular time there were four born this one who, who, who was on this cart could not walk. And when they came nigh to the press, they uncovered the roof. And we'll go on. In other words, they came down through the roof. And they brought the sick of the palsy and laid him right before Jesus. That's, that's verse number five. That's verse number four. When you can listen. Thank you, Lord. 
you can talk about how much faith you got all you want to and not do anything. The Bible says, whatsoever a man doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever man doeth shall prosper. You can talk about how much faith and what you're going to do and how you're going to start your business next year. You can talk about that 25 years. He ain't going to never accomplish nothing. The Bible says when he, now, now watch, look at what the word said. When he, thank you, thank you. When Jesus, y'all see where it's at? He saw them in action. That's what made him move. You can sit around and talk about what you're going to do. Listen, you can sit around and have all these sessions, talk about what you're going to do, and don't never do that. Ain't nothing going to happen. But when he saw their faith, when he saw one door was closed, and they would not stop at a closed door, because let me tell you something, the devil going to try to close every door he can for you getting your breakthrough. The devil going to try to close every door he can for you getting your stuff. The devil going to try to close every door he can for you getting your healing. The devil going to try to close the door. You just got to go another way. You got to detour. You got to say, no, I know what his word says. You got to stand on it and believe it and trust it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. This is a revival message. Oh, my God. Somebody ought to get revived. Somebody ought to say, I, I, did not our heart burn? Oh, my God. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick apostles, Son, good God Almighty, thy sins have been forgiven. Now watch this. Wait just one minute. Wait just one minute. You mean to tell me, mothers, that that child is operating in sin right now? Wait a minute. that I can get two or three other mothers that got children. And they pray just as fervent as mine because they've been right where I'm at. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if I was in that position, I would want to try to find somebody that either been in that position or is in that same position because their prayers are going to be fervent for God. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. The person that was on the cart was wrapped up in sin. But it was the four, y'all don't hear me. It was the four that carried the cart that interceded on his behalf, got him his deliverance. I just need two or three of y'all to pray for somebody's son right now. I just need two or three of y'all to pray for somebody's daughter right now. I just need two or three of y'all to pray for somebody's husband right now. I just need two or three of y'all to pray for Pookie and them. I need somebody to pray for Bro Bama B. I need somebody to come in agreement with a fervent prayer for the sinner man that needs to be saved and God will oh God will God will move on your behalf the sinner man will come through that door he won't have no choice but say I yield I yield God help me Woo! ain't God all right Y'all don't hear me. I just need you to know that the man on that cart was wrapped up in sin. But the full carry of that cart is the faith that moved God. He came up there. He saw their faith. It impressed Jesus. Matter, he said, Son! Good God Almighty. And then after he said that, some, some critics came. And you always going to have them. you always going to have them. Don't you let the critics mess you up. 
Don't you let the critics mess you up. Because you know the truth of the story. Amen, somebody. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. I'm about done. I'm finna sit down. Let me, let me finish this. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto, don't, listen, that businessman sitting back there, don't you let nobody take your dream from you. Let me see if he, put on my clothes. Uh -huh. Don't you let no naysayer. Just call they, they, listen, just call they opportunity done passed them by and they didn't take it. They've been sitting around all the time talking about what they're going to do. And the time they see you jump out there, they, 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 they when flash in front of their mind what they should have done. And then they're going to try to hold you back. That devil is a lie. You go on, start that company, and move on up. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> My God. Watch this, y'all. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins have been forgiven. The critics now, for there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their heart. Always going to have them. Why do it this man? Now look how they're speaking to Jesus. Huh? Why does this man I don't even like the way that sound. Thus speak blaspheme. Who can forgive sin but God only? Watch this, y'all. When you got critics in your life, you can, you can take two positive poles. Stay with me. I'm going to talk to the mechanics in here. You can take two positive poles and you can't start in the car. Until you get that positive, hooked to that negative, See, you know what really makes me get started? The naysayers. Y'all missed that. See, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Joe, they missed that. Joe, they missed that. They missed that. Listen, don't let the haters, let them be your motivators. They ought to help you start something. They ought to help you go to the top. They ought to help you make you what you really going to be. You ought to say, now I know I'm going to do this. Just hook that negative pole to your positive pole and get crunk. Y'all to hear me with that? Oh my God! What you say? And listen, young folks, get crunk! <laughs> Y'all sitting out there now, talking about what past T know about getting crunk. What you know about getting crunk? Oh my God, ain't God good? I'm, I'm, I'm closing it out. Y'all got this. I believe y'all got it. Let me show you something in verse 7. That the naysayers spoke right. They didn't say what they were supposed to say. But they spoke right. Watch this, y'all. They said, who can forgive sin but God? So now, it's up to Jesus to show them that he is. Y'all don't hear me. They spoke right. See, the scribe knew the word. They knew the word. They just weren't living it. They knew the word. Y'all don't know nobody like that. They knew the word. They just wasn't living then. They wanted everybody else to, anyway. Anyway, let me move on. Let me move on. They spoke correctly that nobody could forgive sin but God. So now it's up to our Lord and Savior to show them that he is. Watch this, y'all. And immediately, Jesus perceiving uh, in his wait a minute so you mean to tell me I ain't gonna stay I ain't gonna stay on this one too long you mean to tell me that he didn't know by divine appointment he really knew by the gifting that was in it uh huh 
Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He said he knew in his spirit what they were thinking. That's called a gift of knowledge. <laughs> and that's dangerous. Now, I ain't going to even tell y'all that, that, yes, God give us that gift. And yes, I can look through muddy water and spot dry land sometimes. But, but listen, it's just, it just going to teach me how to better pray for you. Because I sure ain't going to say it. But I know it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Donna, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Boom. All right, y'all, moving on. Because everybody in here about to got quiet. It is what it is, y'all. It's, it's a gift from God. And, and you got you to gotta take that up with God. The spirit of discernment, the spirit of knowledge. If I didn't have that, I couldn't be here. All right, let's move on. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit, not by divine appointment, in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your heart? That's how I know that crowd that was around here was seeking direction. I looked around several of them, direction, 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 direction. Okay, okay. All right. He says, whether it, whether is it easier to say to the sick of palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise, take up this bed and walk? Jesus said here, I tell you what, if you don't believe I've got the power, very softly, Desiree, to forgive sin, if you don't believe that I and God are one, he said, I'm going to give you something that you see. I'm going to give you something tangible. Now y'all, watch this, watch this. Y'all know this man on this cart better than I do. See, I ain't been here for about two and a half years at this point. Maybe two years. So you know this man a whole lot better than I do. You done seen him on this cart a whole lot longer than I have. You know how long he been paralyzed. You know how long he been tied up in sin. You know how he got to this point he's at. I don't know none of that. But if I can't forgive sin in your mind, if I tell him to take up his bed and walk, will you believe that? Ain't my God all right? They said, if you do that, we'll marvel. He pointed at that man and said, take up your bed and walk. Ain't God all right? You keep believing God. Don't worry about when they say you can't do it. When they see God do it in your life, they'll believe in it. My God is an awesome God. He got power to heal. He got power to defend. You just keep walking the walk. God going to show them he's more than a conqueror. Ain't God all right? Let me tell y'all something. I'm done. I learned that success, you hear me? Those of you all who hadn't seen it. On your way home today. It's not in my office. Certain things I don't do. That's why you don't see no picture of me out in front of that church because it's about Jesus, it ain't about me. But when you go in that conference room, you'll see a picture of Pastor T in unity with the deacons. And if you go in that corner, you'll see a man. Come on down. Watch this, y'all. God ain't told you to fight. You'll see a picture of a man that's portrayed to be Daniel with his hands behind his back. He ain't fighting. He walking around looking at them lions that they said were going to eat him up. Listen, let me tell you something. When God is on your side, when God has sent you to do something, when God it got you on a mission, 
You ain't got to fight no folk. You ain't got to prove who you are. You just have your hand behind your back. And you'll be able to say, God has sent his angels to shut the mouth of the lion. Y'all hear me? Did y'all hear what I said? Now you know why that picture's in there. Everybody ought to go by and look at it. I ain't gonna fight. I don't fight. I don't fight. I don't fight. You ought to fight the battle if you just. <laughs> if you ain't never looked at a picture, go in there and look at it. You'll see who supposed to be Daniel. Hand behind his back. Worshiping God. They may say all kind of stuff about you. They may say it ain't going to work. Ask the deacon. They told the deacon, said, we thought y'all wanted somebody with some experience. That young boy ain't never passed it. Had the deacon think they made a mistake. Hear from God. First two or three years, oh, y'all still on the honeymoon. Y'all still on honeymoon. Then it just faded out. I can't even find them now. You wasn't invite them down here, they wouldn't come. I'm just talking about God, y'all. I didn't say pass the t-shirt to mouth. I said God sent his angel. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. At this time, the doors of the church are open. Amen. 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 If there be one who hear God and feel that they want to come forward or let them come, amen. For you're not coming to Union Springs, you're coming to the body of Christ. You're coming to the one who was born of a Virgin Mary by the power of God, the one who was crucified for your sins, hung, bled, and died, buried in a borrowed tomb, but in three days rose with all power in his hand. So this time we offer Christ unto you, my brother and my sister. serve a God who is able to do anything but fail. Would you come?
keep going, Desi. Amen. As we understand that there are those that are um, with us by way of social media, and we understand that they are not in the congregation right now, so we still like to offer to them the opportunity to receive Christ into their life. So if you will pray the simple prayer, Lord God, we thank you for coming into to, for being coming into this world to be a savior for our sins. We thank God for sending his son, Jesus, to be born of a virgin Mary, to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, we understand that through this life that we have sinned and disconnected ourselves from you. So we invite your son, Jesus Christ, into our hearts and into our lives. We confess with our mouths and believe with our hearts that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin hung, bled, and died on a cross for our sins, was buried but rose in three days with all power in his hand. If you've prayed that prayer and believing in your heart, confessing with your mouth, we believe that you too shall be saved. Amen. 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 Anybody grateful for salvation? Amen. We, we just read in the word for this purpose of, of, the, of the works of the enemy, God sent his son, Jesus. Anybody grateful for your own salvation? Are we sure of our salvation? Amen. 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 At this time, there's no announcements. Amen. Amen. Remind the ursus that Sister Ivor May and Miss Sister Eva May and Miss Karen would like to give me that card again, so it's Kathy, so I get it right. The meeting, is it a meeting? Outing, amen. Meeting at 1245, thank y'all. Amen, if at this time we ask that each and every one stand to be dismissed. Amen, we're well, good to see you, Sister Antonia. Amen, good to have you back with us. Amen, as well as Mother Lottie, good to see you. Mother Freeman, amen. See, look, I don't I don't messed up and start calling out. Mother Taylor, Mother Taylor, everybody, let's see, let's see. Hey, everybody, good to see you. Hey, everybody's good to see you. Hey, everybody's good to see you. I got everybody covered. Amen, amen. While we yet stand. Father God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, Lord God. But Lord God, we pray that we take it all into our heart, Lord God, and understand that your Holy Spirit stands in agreement with us. And Lord God, we thank you that you are interceding on our behalf because there are times, truly there are times, we do not know what we ought to pray for. So we thank you for your spirit that leads, guides, and directs us. Lord God, we thank you for our pastor. Lord God, we're praying that you continue to restore him. Lord God, we thank you and we pray that you continue to bless him. Bless his wife, bless his family, Lord God, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord God, continue to pour out your anointing over his life. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God, as we leave this place, but never your grace. Lord God, we're praying that you bring us back together soon, Lord God, all with smiles on our faces, understanding that you, in our time away from us, God has truly been good. Lord God, give us traveling grace and highway favor. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we are able to ask or think. Lord God, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your dominion. We thank you for your majesty. It all belongs to you. The wise God, Jehovah Jireh, is our provider. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, the Jesus the Christ, the sweet communion of his holy and divine spirit, may it now rest and rule in our hearts and mind from henceforth now and forever. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. God bless you, God keep you, and we love you. Amen. Shalom.